If you are in the market for a car that is not an SUV and also not a Skoda Superb, then perhaps the Skoda Octavia is the one for you. My name is Peter and in this review we're going to have a look at the Skoda Octavia here in this Sportline edition, which I think from the moment go is a fantastic looking car. Especially with this black pack trim, so you have some black here, some black around the door trim and so on. It is a really handsome car. And in comparison with the Skoda Superb, it is of course a little smaller, it's a little lighter, it's a bit more compact, but you're really not getting snubbed in terms of space and capacity. First of all, you're on the front, uh, you got the signature daytime running lights here for the Octavia. And in this uh, stylish blue color Sportline edition with the black pack, like I said, so you get the black mirrors, you get the black trim here, the black roof rails. I think it is a fantastically handsome car. Personally, I would have picked uh, full black wheels because I think this silver trim here doesn't look particularly good. Uh, but overall, I think this is a handsome car. I mentioned the Superb earlier. It is significantly smaller, about 20 centimeters smaller than the Superb. So that's about this much. And it doesn't sound like much, but if you think 20 centimeters here in leg space, it is quite a lot. So there's no way around the fact that you have a little bit smaller boot capacity and a little bit less space inside. Coming around the car, fuel filler cup here on the back right, because here in the Netherlands we only get the hybrids and this is not the plug-in, this is the regular mild hybrid version. So still gotta put your fuel in. That's all we get here in the Netherlands. And if you've watched earlier videos, you might've seen that in the Kodiak and in the Superb, I thought that this powertrain in particular with 150 horsepower was not enough for those cars. This being slightly smaller, slightly lighter, slightly more compact, it does work in this car, as we'll see when we start driving in a bit. Coming to the back of the car, it's actually the same story as in the front. I think this is a good looking car here from the back, especially these 3D tail lights, I think look really cool. I mentioned the boot capacity. So let's have a look what the deal is here. Now, obviously it's not gonna be as big as the Superb, but 640 liters of capacity is more than plenty, I can tell you. Uh, let me show you by getting inside the car. This is how big it is. It fits me more than easily. And it's really a case of how much space do you really need uh, if 640 is not enough for you. If it isn't enough, there's a little bit of extra space here in the bottom. So you got a storage bin there in case you have to plug in for a cable or so on. Uh, and you have a little bit more space over there. And of course, it's still Skoda, so you get some cubbies on the side, some hooks and all that stuff. And if you put the rear seats down, which you can do with the hook over here, uh, you get an additional thousand liters of space. So that fits basically anything, your aunt, your uncle, senior citizens, wheelchairs, uh, washers, dryers, you name it, that basically all fits. Now sitting here in the front of the Skoda Octavia, obviously there is a lot of familiar equipment in here. Uh, underpinnings of this car is obviously the Volkswagen Golf. Uh, so that's why we see things like this gear lever here, or drive selector rather. Uh, this comes straight out of a Golf. We, we've seen other Skoda models like the Kodiak or the Superb that we drove recently uh, that have the gear selector back here from the Volkswagen ID models. Uh, so this doesn't have that because it comes straight from the Golf platform. Doing a quick tour around the cabin, we got some traditional uh, controls here for the windows and the mirrors, all is well there. Uh, pretty standard Skoda steering wheel as well. The nice modern fresh look with not too many real buttons here on the steering wheel. Uh, so just some uh, radio controls and some system controls here and that is all you get. So that's super simple. Uh, nice that there's not too many buttons. I said the same in the Kodiak because the uh, cruise control button or it's a slight little lever here uh, is here behind the steering wheel. So that's super nice. It frees up a lot of space here that you don't have these giant clusters of buttons on your steering wheel, which I personally prefer. We got some shifter pedals here, which might seem slightly irrelevant, and they are uh, because we only have a 1.5 liter engine with 150 horsepower. Uh, so that's not too much, and in daily life you'll never use them. But as somebody in the comments pointed out, it is handy when you're pulling a caravan, for example, that you can at least select your own gear or stay in gear a little bit longer when you want to. Uh, so that's a fair point. Uh, so as far as that goes, it's nice that you have the option. Uh, but like I said, in daily life you'll never use them because the automatic gearbox is easily smooth enough. Traditional stocks behind the steering wheel here for your wipers and your indicators and your lights. So that's all pretty simple as well. Uh, and in front of me is the familiar uh, Skoda display with some permanent uh, markers on the side for your engine temperature and your fuel levels. I'm not really sure why that is there, but you know, I guess it's nice to have, but those are permanently there. The screen itself, obviously you can customize as you see fit with information, maps, uh, your RPMs, your speed and so on on there as you see fit. The same goes for the big screen in the middle. It's a familiar Skoda screen, of course. Uh, works quite nicely. I quite like this uh, setup. Uh, so you can you know, put all your 
uh, system info here. You can all put, connect your phone and everything. And biggest pet peeve of mine is that the color and even the type version of the Skoda Octavia does not match here. We saw that in the review of the Neos, for example, it's not that complicated apparently to do so, but Skoda can't do it. Other than that, you got your uh, tiles up here, for example, for your uh, safety systems that you can quickly get to when you start driving. And you got your tiles here on the bottom for home screen, radio, phone, apps, and all that good stuff. Uh, so that's nice, uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It all works as you expect, which is actually quite, you know, the achievement. Um, it's quite nice to work with, I think. It's pretty, it's, it's not too complicated, it's nice and simple. And it's just a system that, you know, fits the car very well. When we go down a little bit further, we got a set of shortcut buttons here, for example, for your climate control, uh, your window maximum and so on, driving modes. Uh, pretty simple, uh, nice addition that you have a physical button to get to those things that you don't have to start swiping in menus uh, to get to a certain uh, point in the menu. So for example, if I want to go straight to my climate control, I can just press the button and I'm in the menu. So that is nice. Uh, does it really add anything? Not sure, you know, an extra swipe here and there is not the end of the world, but it is nice to have this physical option. And I think the integration is done quite nicely as well. We got some manual vent control here, which is something I always appreciate. And unlike the Superb and the Kodiak, we don't have that weird sort of nipple here, but a nice slider to work with. So that is nice. Uh, and then down here, we have our phone charging pad, obviously for wireless charging and two USB-Cs for anything else that you might wanna plug in. And like I said, the drive selector here straight from the Volkswagen Golf. Uh, there's not too much piano black in this car, which is actually quite nice because if you uh, see other videos of me, you know that I hate piano black. So the only spots are here and here on the door, which is pretty sweet. And as my camera woman uh, said, why didn't they just change that into this carbon fiber look material that we have here on the dash? Which is actually a valid question. I quite like the look of this, even though it's not real carbon fiber, of course. But, you know, why can't they make this down here as well? Maybe something for the next generation. Either way, uh, to finish the tour, we got your park button here, your auto holds, two cup holders here and a little cubby for your key. And then we have a little armrest bucket to throw in anything that flies around in your car. Overall, it's a very nice cockpit to be. Uh, the car, obviously, it feels a little smaller than the Superb because it physically is. Uh, but it's also in here, it feels slightly more cocooned, if you want to call it that way. You really get the feeling that you're in the car and part of the car, also due to these sort of bucket seats almost. Uh, so quite nice and in this version we also have the panoramic roof which is always a nice addition to brighten up the interior of a car uh, there's quite a lot of gray in here so it's not super dark uh, but overall you know extra light is always good uh, so that is a nice option to have um, i have to say as well that actually that this uh, sportline version has obviously all the toys and bells and whistles so uh, some of the options that you see here might not be available in lower trim uh, but overall in this trim it is quite a nice place to be i really feel uh, connected with the car here and the view out is quite nice as well. So yeah, overall a pleasant cabin. So obviously a little driving with this Skoda Octavia and you find me at the tail end of morning rush hour on the highway. And that is a place where this Octavia feels right at home, I have to say. Uh, even with the limited amount of horsepower, it's a very pleasant travel and cruising car. Everything in automatic, everything in comfortable, all is well. This is a car you definitely can cover quite a lot of distance in without any issues. And with the giant boot space and the relatively good space in the back, it's also a car that you can definitely take your family on holiday with. There are things to notice as far as that goes though, because we're on the highway doing a little over 100 now, and you can definitely tell it is louder in here than in the Superb. It's a smaller car to begin with, but it's also less space for sound insulation and so on. Uh, you can definitely tell the difference between the two. And the same goes for the Kodiak, of course. Uh, that's also a lot quieter at motorway speeds. And next to that, obviously, we have the limited power supply available in this Octavia. Uh, 150 horsepower in this version. There is also a 115 horsepower version available. Uh, I would not get that one at all. That's just not enough power. This 150, I said in the Kodiak and in the Superb, that it's not enough for those cars, and I stand by that. It is not enough for those large vehicles. Uh, make the vehicle a little smaller and a little lighter in this Octavia form, and it's livable. Uh, here in the Netherlands especially, we can't drive fast anyway, and the roads are so good and smooth, and the traffic in general is not very fast, uh, that it's, in these circumstances, it's very 
livable and drivable. I haven't had many moments this week where I was like, oh, I'm definitely underpowered and I can't keep up with the rest of traffic. That said, I have a German wife. I travel to Germany by car quite often. And there you obviously start to notice the lack of horsepower. Uh, but those are exception cases. I mean, I spend the majority of my time here in the Netherlands as well. Uh, and then all as well. It's definitely, you can live with this small amount of horsepower in this form factor, no problem. Uh, once you start pulling caravans and so on, I don't know, I don't have a caravan, so I haven't tested that, but I can imagine then the lack of performance is also evident. Uh, unfortunately, that is just the way it is here in the Netherlands, because with taxes, this is all we are gonna get here. There's no plans, as far as I know, for a VRS or anything, and anything diesel is out of the question to begin with. Uh, so these are the powertrains you have to live with here. Uh, so as far as that goes, I would always pick this 150 horsepower version uh, as the, the top of the line in terms of power, uh, because it just, it's, I've said it in other videos too, it's just nicer to drive with a little bit of extra power. It's not doesn't necessarily make it a race car or anything, but it's just nicer to drive with a bit more punch under your right foot. That said though, um, currently in traffic jam and lights are flashing that I should do 50 or less. Uh, so, you know, in those circumstances, power doesn't really matter. And this car is quite smooth in terms of its power delivery. Um, the hybrid system is working pretty seamlessly with the DSG gearbox and it's just a relaxing experience altogether. Uh, same thing goes for driving in the city, just little pulls, traffic lights, little pieces. It's all fine. It's very drivable, very nice to live with. Uh, the only thing that you have to get used to a little bit is that the engine will cut off completely at any opportunity it gets. Uh, like right now, we're coming to a slowdown, so my foot's off the gas, and you can see the revs going down, and when we slow down a little bit further, then it's gonna turn off completely. Uh, so that is uh, something you have to sort of get your head around, that that is what the car does. Like right now, zero RPM. Uh, and then, of course, as soon as you let go of the brake or hit the gas again, the engine has to start up and uh, start going again. You can do that off with the, just turning the engine shut off, off completely, uh, but this is obviously a fuel saving measure. Uh, it doesn't get in the way or anything. It, uh, the start procedure is very brief, and as soon as you get your head around that uh, little tiny delay when you are, for example, waiting for at an intersection, as soon as you get your head around that tiny delay, all as well, it's very nice to live with. Here in the back of the Skoda Octavia, you can really notice that it is a shorter car than the Superb or the Kodiak. So I'm sitting behind myself now and I'm 1 meter 83 tall and about 90 kilos heavy. So to give you an idea for size and there's plenty of space here for me to sit. And if I put the seat a bit forward, there's even more space, obviously. But as a driver, I like to sit quite far back and also quite angled. Uh, but even that you can see, I can sit behind myself without any issues. Uh, part of that is that there's a lot of space here for my feet. I can easily put my feet under the chair. So that's quite nice. And that really adds to the comfort that you don't have to angle your feet in a weird way. Uh, so that's you know quite a natural, easy position to sit also for longer journeys. I do really have the feeling that the cockpit is closer to me than for example, in the Kodiak uh, that we drove in an earlier video, you can really tell that way that the car is shorter. And also these massive seats are really blocking my lines of sight. They're big, they're comfortable when you sit in them, but sitting behind them, especially when you're a kid, uh, there's quite a lot of volume that you have to look around. Uh, so that is definitely something to consider when picking your seat options. Uh, but looking through the middle of the car, uh, it's all fine. I can really see what's going on. And obviously the panoramic roof adds a lot of extra light in the cabin. I already mentioned it's all gray here, so it's relatively light, uh, but it's still always nice to have that extra light source. So that's good. If I move over one to the middle seat, Obviously I get uh, you know, a bit closer to the roof. There's about this much space left before I hit the roof. Uh, and again, here you can really tell that the cabin is shorter because the cockpit feels a lot closer to me. The quality of the materials back here is quite nice, really on par with the front. Uh, nothing to complain about there. The seats are comfortable. Uh, as you can see, I can't sit be besides myself three times. Uh, for that, the car is just not wide enough. About two adults here with some stuff in the middle, no issue whatsoever. And obviously three kids in a row, also more than fine. If I move back here, I'll show you a few last creature comforts. Uh, we got a double pocket here for big and small stuff. Nice that Skoda does this, these kind of things properly. Uh, we've reviewed a bunch of Audis recently and then you have this like budget little net here. Uh, it's terrible. You buy an expensive product and you get that kind of stuff. Here in Skoda, it's all nicely done, nice material. So that is cool. 
We got some manual controls for the ventilation here, so that's always nice to see as well. This little cubby, I'm not sure what it's for, but I suppose you can put stuff there. Uh, and we got two USBs down here to charge your children and all their devices. So all is going well there too. Last but not least, we got the middle armrest. Nice and simple, nice and clean. We got the ski hatch here too, by the way. Uh, so this is cool, uh, nothing to fall into with your elbow. And we have the cup holders hidden underneath here. Uh, not the most elegant solution if you ask me, uh, but it works in a pinch to put your drink. That's fine, it's not the best uh, supportive system in the world, but you know, for kids and stuff back here, it's okay. I prefer to see it actually integrated here in the front so that it pops out. But like this, it's at least out of the way and you can continue your journey. Obviously, we gotta find a few areas to nitpick because no car is perfect. Uh, two things on the outside. First of all, the integration of the indicator lights on the front. I don't like that, that the way they go through the headlights. It doesn't look good. And second of all, it's the uh, side mirrors. They're not very big. It's not like I can't see behind, uh, but especially this one feels very small for some reason. It's also in a weird shape. I'm sure that's for aerodynamic reasons, but you know, it could have been a bit bigger. Here on the inside, um, not much to not like. Obviously the piano black is uh, not my favorite, uh, but I have to say in this car, it is a fairly minimal affair. So, you know, I can live with that. Uh, the temperature and the fuel gauge next to my instrument cluster, the fact that they're both permanently there, I'm not really sure why that is. Uh, the fuel gauge might be handy, but they could have made that a bit smaller. And there's also a digital uh, gauge in my instrument cluster anyway. So I don't need the permanent markers on the side. Uh, and engine temperature is a bit of the same thing. If I want to know my engine temperature, who, who wants to know that? I mean, if there's something going wrong, I'll get a warning light, right? Uh, so those two things are not really necessary as far as I'm concerned. Uh, other than that, the hotkeys here are handy, I suppose, if you quickly want to get to something, uh, although you could find it in a menu, but I do appreciate the fact that, you know, you can physically get to a menu item right away. Uh, and that is basically it. I mean, the seats are comfortable, the view out is excellent, uh, especially with the panoramic roof, you have that extra bit of light. Uh, and overall, it's just, it's a pleasant place to be, a pleasant cabin to be. Uh, I can't really fault Skoda for the materials either. I mean, it's all, at least surface level, it's all fine. The lower you go, obviously, the more uh, scratchy the plastics get, uh, but it is the case in almost any car and it's not in, done in a way that it is annoying or stuff that you touch constantly that you're like, oh, it's so terrible. It's all fine, all the touch points are very pleasant. Uh, so, yeah, job well done from Skoda that there is not much to pick apart here. After a week with this Skoda Octavia, I am completely convinced that this is the car for most people. Unless you can really make the argument that you need the length of a Superb or the space of a Kodiak, I think this is the car that offers 95% of what those cars offer in a slightly smaller, slightly more manageable package and obviously at a slightly lower cost as well. Especially in this Sportline example with the black trim, I think it's a fantastic looking car that offers so much performance, space, comfort and everything you might need for you and your family that unless you can really make the argument that you need the Kodiak or the Superb, this is probably all the car you're ever gonna need. I think it looks great. I think Skoda has done a great job in making this a package that is so compelling and offers so much value for the price that you pay for it that it's a car you should seriously consider if you are somebody like me with a family, um, one or two kids, and just want something nice to drive to work on holiday in town, just a great all-rounder look no further. That's all I got for you in this video. Thanks for watching. Give it a sub and a thumb if you like this video and you don't want to miss any of the upcoming videos that we have coming. And for now, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.